Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. So as you probably already know, there are several Arch Linux installers that you can find on the internet. And since the April 2021 ISO, there is one also included in the Arch ISO, although it's quite basic. Now, as a disclaimer, I just have to say here, I prefer to install actually Arch from the terminal, but I think it's great to have installers for people who are not so knowledgeable about Linux yet, but want to try out Arch. Now, the installer that we are going to have a look at today, it's called Arch Linux GUI. Now, as you can see here, I will leave a link to this page in the video description below. This project basically wants to give you the possibility to install Arch Linux and to install it with vanilla packages. That means you will basically find here just pure Arch Linux. Now on the page here, as you can see here, it says like Arch Linux, ALG or Arch Linux GUI has a monthly release schedule. New ISOs are coming on the first of every month and with the next release, which is gonna be on the 1st of June, 2021, we will have more desktop environments and window manager. Because as of now, this installer is offering only the GNOME and KDE desktop environment. Now let's go under the files here. Now you need to know a couple of things here before you go ahead and download the ISO. Now there are, as you can see here, several ISO. There is one with XFCE Pure, which is in beta. This is probably coming out next month with a new ISO. We have, as you can see here, Arch Linux GUI. We have Arch Linux GUI GNOME, Arch Linux GUI Minimal, Arch Linux GUI Pure and GNOME Pure. So these are the ones actually that are using the May 2021 ISO and then we have some of them using the April 2021 ISO. Now, you might ask, what are the differences between these ISOs? Okay, so when you don't see anything written here, like here, for example, Arch Linux GUI, this is meant to be the KDE installation. Now, Arch Linux GUI GNOME, it's of course the GNOME installation. Now, these are not vanilla installations of Arch. We have here some extra packages from the Chaotic AUR and some customizations. Now, we have also GUI Minimal, which is a KDE version of the customized version of uh, Arch Linux GUI. And we have Arch Linux GUI Pure. Now, this is actually the pure version of KDE on Arch. And also the same thing goes for GUI GNOME Pure. So these two basically are the pure installations. There are no extra packages. There are no extra repositories. These are installations providing you with pure Arch Linux packages. Now in this video, I'm going to install the Arch Linux GUI Pure. So this is the KDE version and I've already downloaded the ISO and I've already started up the virtual machine behind this window here. So let me go full screen here and let's go ahead and boot the machine. Now the installation is done through the Calamares installer, as you will see in a second here. And we're going to have the choice there to partition our disk and install the system. So this is going to take a moment here. It's going to boot up in a live ISO with KDE. And we're going to be very soon here in the KDE desktop environment. And as you can see, KDE is now booting up. And we are now in the KDE desktop environment. So the first thing actually I need to, I want to adjust here the screen resolution because it's not picking up my VM screen resolution here. So I'll just pick up 1080p here. There you go. So here we are on the KDE desktop. I would say let's go ahead and install the system immediately. So we're just going to search for install system here. And it's going to boot up here the Calamares installer in a second. There you go. So usual installer here, we select the language. In my case, I'm going to go with American English. And for the region, because I have already an internet connection, it's already selected here. If you don't have it and you have Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi down here. And then we can click next. I'm going to select my keyboard here. I'm just going to pick up the keyboard layout I have. And now we can select the disk and partition. So if you want to do it easy, you just go ahead here and select erase disk. So if we click this option here, you can see you're going to have the option to select no swap, swap with hibernation or without hibernation or swap to file. Now, when you select this option here, the system will be installed depending on the machine you have. If it's an MBR or legacy machine or a UFI machine, it's going to have a, a EFI system partition or not, depending on the machine type you have. It's going to have the kind of swap that you define and it's going to have a root partition only. So you will not have a home partition here available if you select erase disk. If you do want to have a home partition, you will need to go ahead and select manual partitioning. So this is what I'm going to do in this video, because if you want to do that, at least you see how it's done. So I'm going to select here manual partitioning and the only disk I have here, it's already selected. 
and you can see here it's already telling me that it's a EFI machine or a UFI machine better said and then I can click next now the disk is already selected the first thing I need to do is to create a new partition table because it's a brand new disk and um, because this is a UFI machine, I need to select the GUID partition table or the GPT partition table. This is because I have a UFI machine. Now, if you have a legacy machine, you would go ahead and select master boot record or MBR. And then you can click OK. So now we have the partition table in place and we can create our partitions. So if you have an um, MBR legacy system, you don't need to create a EFI system partition, of course. You can just go ahead and create your swap uh, home and root partition that I'm going to do afterwards here. But if you do have a UFI machine, you'll need to create a EFI system partition. So we can go to create and we need to define the size. So for the EFI partition, I'm going to go with 300 maybe bytes. And the file system here is going to be FAT32. And the mount point will have to be boot EFI. And I'm going to go here for the boot flag as well and then click OK. Now the next I'm going to select free space here and click create. I'm going to create a swap partition. Now this is not really mandatory to create a swap partition here. You could create a swap file afterwards in the installation by going into the terminal and create one yourself. But I'm going to do it here in the installer anyway. So I'm going to create a one gigabyte swap partition here. And for the file system it's going to be Linux swap. And for the flags, I'm going to go with swap as well. Now I'm going to go free space and create. And now I'm going to create the root partition. So for the root partition, I'm going to go for 25,000 megabytes or 25 gigabytes. The file system is going to be ext4 in my case, but you can select here also other file systems. Now keep in mind that if you want to use BadRFS, for example, you'll need to do it from the terminal as we have done in the last monthly installation of Arch. If you want to have more infos about that, go ahead and check that video. In this case, I'm going to select ext4. I'm not going to encrypt it, but I have to select the mount point, which is the forward slash for the root file system. And the flag is going to be root and then click OK. Now, the last partition is the home partition. So I'm going to click free space and create. I'm going to leave the default here. The default also here for ext4 and the mount point is going to be slash home. And there is no flag here, so I'm just going to click OK. And now this is done. So I can click next here and I can create my account here. So I'm going to enter my name and the machine is going to be called Arch. And I can select a password for the user. And I want to use the same password for the administrator account and then click next. So this is the summary of things we have done. So we can just click install here and the installer is going to start right away. So this is, of course, going to take some time and pay attention to this slideshow here in the installer because it's going to tell you a little bit more about the project. You can see here the project aims to help users install and use Vanilla Arch Linux with just a few clicks. Uh, it gives you three types of editions and so on. You can read through here the slideshow. It gives you some information about the project. Now, I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to wait until the installation is done. So I'll be back with you guys in a second. So here we go. The installation is done. So we can click restart now and click done. Now the machine is rebooting here. I can see already here the grab bootloader. Now this is a little bit customized. We have some colors here, but nothing too big. So we can go ahead here and start our machine and we should be greeted by SDDM, which is the display manager for KD. There you go. So we have here SDDM and we can type in my password and hit enter. And we should be greeted by KDE in a second. There you go. So I will need to adjust again my display resolution here. So let me go ahead and do that and select 1080p again and click apply. This is going to do it in a moment. Voila. And so we are in KDE. Now keep in mind the ISO that we just installed was actually created on the 1st of May and we are now almost in the third week of May. So there are for sure going to be updates. So the first thing we're going to do here, we are going to actually go to the console and I'm going to actually go full screen here. And increase the font size and type in sudo pacman-syu. Enter my sudo password here. And as you can see, we have several updates here. But I just want you to have a look here at the repository used. We have core, extra and community. So these are the main repositories. We don't have anything extra in here. So let's go ahead here and update our system. Uh, we have several updates here also for the kernel. So this is important to do it. 
But other than that here, you can see we are in a vanilla install of Arch. We have basically KDE here with several packages. We don't have, as far as I can see, any customization of any kind. We have under internet here, not even a browser. We have under multimedia here, basically nothing. We have our settings and our system utilities. So if you want to customize this with other programs, you will have to do it from the terminal, which is something good if you are looking for this kind of installation. So in my case, I would go ahead probably and install a browser here. I would have to install some multimedia applications. But if I want to start with a fresh installation of Arch, this is actually a great ISO if you are in a hurry and you want to install Arch quickly. Now let's go ahead here and finish the installation. I'll go back to full screen here. It's going to take a moment to do that. You can see here the latest kernel has been now installed is 5.12.4 and we will need to reboot the machine to boot into that kernel. So we're going to do that in a moment. And there you go, the machine is now updated. So let's reboot because we want to boot with the new packages locked in. It's going to take a moment to do that. And we should be greeted by STDM. There you go. So let's enter KDE again. So you can see it's also quite fast here. And we are back in the updated version of KDE. So when I tested this actually before recording the video, I've seen that this installation actually is providing about 768 packages. So it's absolutely not heavy. But one thing that you need to keep in mind, for example, if you open here the software center in KDE, you will see some errors, but that's actually nothing special. The thing is when you click here fetching updates, for example, you will see this error. And this is because some packages are actually missing. If you want to correct this, you'll need to go to the terminal by opening up the console and you will need to install one package. So sudo pacman-s and the package is package kit-qt5 and then hit enter. Enter the sudo password and proceed with the installation and then you will be able to update your packages also from the software center. However, me personally, I prefer to do it from the terminal, but if you want to do it from the software center here, this is the package you need to install. Now, if we type in free-h, you can see here the system is using 528 megabytes of memory, which for being in KDE, honestly, it's actually not bad at all. So the system is very light and it's just providing the minimum packages. Now, as I said before, go ahead and check out also the other ISOs. There are also some ISOs with a little bit more customizations. I've tried, for example, the KDE version, which has, as I said before, also the chaotic AUR in it with two packages installed and the Tela icon themes, if I'm not mistaken. But if you want to have the vanilla Arch Linux installation, then choose the pure versions of the ISO on the page to which I will leave a link in the video description below. Now, again, my preferred way to install Arch is always from the terminal because it gives you the complete flexibility to install it the way you want to. But of course, if you want to try out Arch, the vanilla Arch Linux installation without any customization, just to see if it's good for you or you don't like it or you want to explore more, this installer is providing you with the possibility to do exactly that. So if you try this installer out, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. And if you have any question about the video, let me also know in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And I hope also that you liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always help me out. And if you want to support my work, you can become a patron. As you probably already know, I do with my patrons once a month a live webinar where we are focusing on a topic about Linux. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys. I really appreciate that and I'll see you very soon in the next one.